With the Minecraft Caves and Cliffs update part 2 release only being about 5 days away, in this video I'm going to be telling you 5 things you can do to prepare for this update. One for each day, it works out perfectly. If you're new around here, be sure you subscribe here to the channel for daily Minecraft content, but without wasting any of your time, let's get right into the video. Now just in case you are completely unaware, Minecraft 1.18 Caves and Cliffs update part 2 is releasing in only 5 days as of when I'm recording and uploading this video on the 25th of November. This gave me the perfect video idea to tell you 5 things to do to prepare for this update and of course if you do not know what the Caves and Cliffs update part 2 is it's basically a very big update that updates not only um, the mobs a few new items like that are added to the game but basically it changes the entire of Minecraft's terrain generation adding all new and improved mountains to the game along with multiple new cave biomes and a new cave generation system which is drastically different different from what's in Minecraft at the moment. Alongside this, to make everything mesh together perfectly, Maljang have spent numerous hours and days and months working on the base terrain generation of Minecraft to make it all fit together, just like a very well planned out puzzle. Because of all the changes coming in this update, it's unlike many which have came before it, meaning there is actually quite a few things to do here if you plan to experience all of the new content the day is released. Now let's begin with do not make a new world. For some of you this may be the last ever opportunity you have to experience Minecraft's old terrain generation or I should say current terrain generation. If you play on Bedrock Edition especially this problem is intensified. Let's say you're a brand new player to the game, you just got Minecraft a few days ago or you literally just started playing. I made a video about this previously but I recommend if you've already got no worlds in Minecraft create a few so that you have access to current versions of Minecraft on your game. If you've got a world you've been spending so many hours on or even a new world you created right now and you're just starting out I recommend you keep this world, do not delete it meaning you have a mix of the current Minecraft terrain generation and old terrain generation. Why would you want to do this? Well basically Minecraft's current terrain generation is a lot more old fashioned. If you're a fan of the current Minecraft or the old fashioned Minecraft and you want to go mining just by digging down and emptying out these giant tunnels in order to find um, ores like diamonds and gold and copper then be sure you do that now um, because after this update releases the Caves and Cliffs update part 2 the typical and traditional um, methods of mining in Minecraft and exploration will be drastically changed and will be almost impossible. Next up I strongly, strongly recommending mining a bunch of resources and stocking up before the release of the Caves and Cliffs update. And that is because there's a lot of things coming in this update that will require a lot of materials. On all the warden is not in this part of the update but I definitely strongly recommend now as I mentioned earlier in the previous point before the um, terrain generation changes and it may become harder for you to find ores and materials for many of you I definitely recommend you um, experience a traditional version of Minecraft right now and find a bunch of ores in the method you are used to before things get flipped on their head. For a while many of us will be quite inefficient at finding resources in Minecraft because of how different the exploration and mining method and process will be. So as I said I recommend right now before the game updates um, stock up on resources so that you are prepared. Build a nether transport system. This is probably um, the most highly recommended thing I'm going to be talking about in this video and this does link back to the first point where I said do not delete your current world and if you were wondering why I said that because I know many of you may be confused thinking but if I keep my current world I will not be able to get the new content 
That is false. Your Minecraft world only consists of the chunks you have currently explored, meaning as soon as you start to find new chunks that you've not explored yet, um, that is where the new content will be. And the fastest possible way to find unexplored chunks in your Minecraft world is through a never transport system. To dumb things down a bit and make it a bit more simple to understand, I believe it's like one block in the nether equals eight blocks in the overworld. So if you travel in the overworld and you were looking for um, new chunks, it would take you eight times as long in the overworld as it would in the nether. That's why you see many people just adding huge um, transport systems maybe with minecarts or just running through corridors where you then get to another um, nether portal inside the nether, you go through and then you're in a completely new and unexplored place. If you want to experience a new content as soon as it is released I definitely recommend you go to the nether right now and start digging out maybe a few hundred or a few thousand blocks out in the nether and then place another portal at the end of that corridor so that then as soon as the update comes out update your game and then go through the portal for the first ever time meaning you will be in the depths of the new terrain generation giving you a mix of the old and the new. The fourth point is to explore and load chunks. This kind of goes against a previous one of finding new chunks, but in this one I recommend you explore a bunch of chunks around um, the vicinity of your Minecraft world and load them so that they are stuck in the old terrain generation. As I said, this links back to the previous points I mentioned perfectly. It will give you a perfect mix of the old ter um, terrain generation and the new terrain generation. If you're um, particularly fine of the current terrain generation and you like the way it is and you like the way the caves generate I strongly recommend if it's a world you really care about and you want it to remain the same with no buggy terrain around it or anything like that I recommend you explore a bunch of chunks around your Minecraft world where you think you may want to build or go in the future so that things will not be too drastically changed and the final one is to get netherite gear I kind of hinted at this earlier but the warden unfortunately is not coming in the Caves and Cliffs update part 2. However, I would take this opportunity you've got right now to find a bunch of netherite and prepare for the Warden when it eventually releases sometime after the release of the Caves and Cliffs update part 2. If you're anything at all like me, you are horrible at finding netherite, so it's best to get a head start right now before we get too close to the spooky warden being added to the game. But that is five things I recommend you to do in order to prepare for the release of Minecraft 1.18 in the Caves and Cliffs update part 2. Be sure you let me know some of your personal recommendations down below in the comments. Did you find these tips useful or do you have something else to suggest? Leave your thoughts down below in the comments. But it's been me, Jeff. Everyone have an amazing day and I'll see See you all tomorrow. Goodbye.